Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. It's that time of the year when we bring colubrid snakes out of hibernation. That's what this show is all about. You're watching Snake Bites. Right behind this door are the colubrid snakes that have been hibernating for three months. Things like this butter corn snake right here. I want to take you guys in and show you what's going on in there and talk about why we hibernate stuff. Hibernation is a state of inactivity and metabolic depression in animals, characterized by lower body temperature, slower breathing, and lower metabolic rate. Although associated with cold temperatures, the root purpose for hibernation is to conserve food during a period when sufficient food is scarce. When snakes are hibernating, it's not like they're 100% dormant. They're still moving around and relatively aware of their environment, certainly much slowed down than normal. As you can see with this albino corn snake, she's still moving around just like an active animal, definitely a little slower than normal, but her tongue reaction is there and everything. This helps when they're in the wild because if they're in a hibernation den and something goes wrong and they need to move out or find a safer place, they can do it. But you know, I can't stress enough how important it is, even in hibernation, to check all of your snakes at least once a week. It's cold and dark in here during hibernation, and you might ask yourself, why do we hibernate snakes? Well, there's a handful of reasons. One would be the fact that it controls obesity in adult snakes. That's right, if they're feeding all year long, they can sometimes get a little bit too fat, and hibernation helps control their weight. It also helps with the follicle growth. The dormant period can spur on females to produce follicles. It also helps when you can just get this many animals out of your hair for a few months. It's a lot of work in here all year long feeding and cleaning, and a few month break is certainly nice. Lastly, there's something that's called spermatogenesis. Let's check in with Dr. Chewy. Welcome to Dr. Chewy, and today we have a special guest. And my guest is Spermatozorgis. Today we are talking about sperm. <laughs> <laughs> Spermatogenesis is a process where this male germ cell undergoes Male tenosis, right? Right, super sperm. <laughs> and produce a number of cells that look like this strapping young superhero, spermatogonia, from which the primary spermatocytes are derived. Each primary spermatocyte divides into two spermatocytes that look like spermatogosis, Georgius. As I'm standing here with my young spermatozoa, the spermatocytes sometimes change into young spermatozoa. <laughs> <laughs> These develop into well-known old spermas. <laughs> I can't say. These develop into mature sperm guzzlers, also known as George. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice play on that. <laughs> These develop into mature spermatozoans, which also develop into sperm cells. Thus, the primary spermatocytes give rise to two cells. The secondary spermatocytes and the spermatocytes. <sighs> and two secondary spermatocytes move in to one subdivision and produce spermatozoa. Thank you for watching the show. I'm Dr. Chewy, and this is my special guest, Sperma to Georges. Say bye, Sperma to Georges. Okay guys, springtime is coming up. It's getting a lot warmer outside. That means for those of you in school, you get to have a spring break. I had my spring break a couple weeks ago and it was relatively boring because I worked. I just had no classes. I want to know if you guys have more exciting spring breaks than I do. Leave a comment below and let us know. Well, it's time to wake these guys up. Now that the lights are on and the snakes are starting to get awake, it's still only 55 degrees in here, so we're going to want to raise the temperature to 65 degrees and over the next 7 to 10 days, we're going to be in the mid-70s. 
Now, a snake typically during hibernation will not urinate or defecate. So if you see excess urination, it's usually a sign of dehydration. And it's really important to get that animal out of hibernation and warm back up because it could potentially even perish. And speaking of that, they should only lose about 10% of their body weight during the entire duration of hibernation, which means that it should be less than 1% per week. Keep an eye on it. As long as your snake stays healthy, it's ready to keep down into hibernation. When it comes to behavior in hibernation, it's actually pretty interesting. The animals are usually cooled down and pretty slow. And as you can see with this corn snake, they're really docile. They don't move a whole lot. Their tongue movement's a little slow, but it's not always the case. There's actually a few animals, in particular black rat snakes, that actually get even more aggressive. Check this one out. Does my juvenile snake need to hibernate? Well, I tell you what, in the wild, of course, the juvenile snakes get the same climate as adults and they do hibernate. But in captivity, the majority of people, including us, keep these juvenile snakes up their first hibernation season so that we can get them up to size to breed even quicker. Should I hibernate my pet snake? Well, I tell you what, your pet snake can certainly stay out of hibernation if you want to keep it around and interact with it during the winter. But remember, one of the reasons for hibernation is to protect against obesity. So during the winter, snakes are naturally going to slow their feeding down. Make sure not to overfeed them too much or you might get a fat snake. When should I stop feeding my snake before hibernation? The general rule of thumb is to clean your snake out about four weeks before you put them into hibernation. Again, it's very important that their system is completely clear of any food. About 10 days after they're out of hibernation, we offer them their first meal and then we start feeding them twice a week and start the breeding process. It's gonna be a long summer. Chewy, what the heck are you doing? Chewy, get up! Get to work, oh, man! I don't want to go to work! Shut up! I hate you! Chews! Chewy, where the hell are you? Chews! Get up! Mm. Wake up! Get up! Oh. Sam, do me a favor, grab me a hundred frozen mice. Yeah, absolutely. Chewy, what the f are you doing in here? Chewy, what the? I need to get mice. Hey Brian, have you seen Chewy? Not in the last hour or so, but he was in the python room last time I saw him. Alright, I need him to help me with those rodents in the back. I'm gonna go check out there. Okay. What the hell? Chewy! Chewy! Hey, get up! Mm -hmm. Who the hell are you? Oh, I, I'm Nick. I just started here. What are you doing in the cage? Brian told me to keep Chewy happy. I'm a little bit scared. Move it, move it, guys, move it, guys. Man, I'm hungry, I gotta piss. Man, I'm gonna go hump something. It's a great day. For this week's comment of the week, the question was, which of your animals are really important to you? And Matter 983 Patter said, My most important pet is, well, can't choose, but I'll have to say my first ball python, my leopard geckos, and my dog. That's absolutely fantastic, but why are we shouting? 
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the show and got a chance to see what it's like, why we hibernate animals and how we bring them out of hibernation. I have a feeling that there's going to be some future shows about cool projects and breeding colubrid snakes. If you guys want to follow all of our antics, make sure to hit us up on Facebook and Twitter at Snake Bites TV. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites. You can see with this animal that if I can find it, it's, I couldn't find it. <laughs>